mustache, guess what? Are you ready for rectangles? Huh? Are you ready for rectangles? Oh, yes, you are. Let's make them fancy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> When it really comes down to it, what are clothing but just rectangles that we wear? So if you've been on historical costuming YouTube for any amount of time, you've probably seen a chiton in Stola, the Greek Roman rectangle garment. Uh, I'm pretty sure costuming drama, fantastical follies, snappy dragon, they've all covered it. It's just a rectangle sewn into a loop and joined at the shoulders. But have you heard of Weepil? And I'm probably pronouncing that entirely wrong because I do not speak Nolato. The Huipil, which just translates as blouse, is also kind of like a tunic, um, is a garment that has very long roots going all the way back to pre-Columbian Mexico and Guatemala. Weepil are living garments meaning that they do have this historical context to them, but they are currently still being made and worn throughout Guatemala and Mexico. My description is going to be full of citations. I encourage you to visit them because I am no expert and I want to be able to share accurate information but I'm still in the process of researching. So I'm going to share what I've learned so far. I encourage you to join me on the research journey. So to address the jaguar in the room, I'm white. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, but these are my three times great grandparents, Mama Aleman and Papa Paco. When Paco passed away, in 1893, Mama Aleman took five of her kids to Los Angeles and they became Americans. I grew up with stories that I was descended from an Aztec princess, which completely romantic view of things, of course. Um, but I do have historical roots in Mexico, uh, Aguas Calientes specifically, um, going back to the Spanish conquest and inspired by uh, V Birchwood and V over at Snappy Dragon, I've been researching my roots and most of them are Irish, English, German, you know, same as, well, honestly, a lot of America, but that, that bit of Mexican history that's there, like before my father passed away, he really wanted to be able to go and see the pyramids and reconnect with that part of our history. And that was something he didn't get to do. And it's one of those things that I don't know if I'll ever feel up to actually traveling myself to Mexico, but that doesn't mean that I can't from home do research and learn about some of the practices of the peoples who grew up where my ancestors grew up. So for me, the rebuild is just kind of the start of that journey. It is a garment that from what I've seen and the data that I've collected, rebuilds are very uh, culturally individualistic. Like a weeple done in one town in Oaxaca is going to be completely different than one town done in Guatemala. And because of that, I didn't want to copy any specific historical example or any specific like current example. There's a uh, blog in a Etsy shop that uh, because of the photos that this particular Etsy curator has of the Weepo that have been woven, I could get really close in and see some of the fun weaving details that they've done. And one of the things I like about this particular Etsy shop is she does include photos of the women who are creating the Weepo, which kind of creates this connection of between the consumer and the artist producing the work. And that's one of the things about Weepo is that they're works of art. Like, 
mine. It took me maybe 40, 60 hours of hand embroidery, and it's nowhere near as detailed as some of the examples that I've seen. So, you know, the amount of time and skill and mastery that goes into these garments is just mind-boggling. So I definitely do want to continue researching this topic for myself, and I'd love to invite you along the way. If you know any Mexican and Latina, Latinx creators here on YouTube that you'd like to share, absolutely share those down in the comments. If you know of any historical uh, experts, I would love to be able to do interviews with folks and share that here on YouTube because, again, it's not it's not just my story to tell. So the Huitil is traditionally done on a back strap loom, which is where your body is the loom. And so you've got one strap going around your back, that's the name, and another strap going around a tree, and you are weaving the fabric that way. I want to make a Huipil inspired tunic. And rather than doing it with the weaving, because I don't, I don't really know much about weaving. I've tried some things. I do plan on learning, but I do know some embroidery. I'm not the best embroiderer, but I can do all right. As a note, while I filmed a lot of the process of creating this, I did not film the entirety of it. So there are going to be gaps in the embroidery where it'll just jump ahead. And I'm sorry about that. I am still working on being able to record myself hand sewing, especially embroidery, where I'm actually in frame and well lit. We build can be a single panel, basically from shoulder to shoulder. Um, if you think about uh, Frida Kahlo in her traditional Mexican dress, that's a huipa. Usually she wears the short one that only comes down to the waist. And that's, I think, that style is generally speaking, just one panel folded over the shoulder, neck hole cut, and you sew up the sides. That's it. Um, there are other examples. And the one I'm going to be doing is actually a three panel. So you have the center panel, again, with the neck cut out, and then two panels sewed up the side, leaving holes for the armpits. I bought some fabric the last time I was down in Portland and went to Mill End Fabrics, which if you live in Portland, check out their Milwaukee store. I only ever went to their Beaverton store when I was growing up, but their Milwaukee store is huge. It's fantastic. I want to go again. Not yet. Anyway, I bought some fabric that I kept circling the store and coming back to. So I had to buy it. I bought three yards of it because I know that's about how much I need for a top. And I sat on that fabric for nine months. And as I sat on that fabric, the more and more I began to dislike it. It was too bright, too colorful for my taste. Like I'm trying to get more color into my wardrobe, but this was just, this was just a step too far. So when I made my Shibori Noren, and I was dyeing that, I threw this fabric in with the bass as well. So the bright orange and red and ultramarine blue fabric became a much more subdued kind of purpley fabric. It still has colors in it, but it's a bit more, more what I can do. The other thing I did is I went and got some contrasting panels. These were just fat quarters, quilting cotton fat quarters that I got for like a dollar a piece. And uh, yeah, so I decided to do an embroidery pattern that I have some service embroidery. I have some deshilado, which is also known as unraveling or drawn thread. It's popular in Europe also as um, hardinger. It's a type of embroidery that you pull the threads out. And then 
bundle those threads to make yourself a gridded surface and then you embroider over the top of that. When I started to research uh, Mexican fashion and specifically traditional Mexican fashion, I came across a garment which is the traditional dress of Aguas Calientes, so, which is to say that it's done by a modern designer trying to capture all of the things that to him symbolize Aguas Calientes. And one of the things that he did in it was he included some deshalado. And I was like, oh, great, cool. Some of the weaving techniques that are done on the huipil can be done with the deshalado as well by pulling out fibers. Because normally when you're doing it on the weaving process, you would do certain things with the fibers as you're weaving it. And you can do those by pulling out fibers and then putting in new ones, doing the back and forth that you would do during weaving, but you can do that with the embroidery.
I am pretty happy with the decorative embroidery, which means I can go ahead and take off these two panels that I base it on, and I can mark out the bottom of this white contrast panel and actually cut into the rest of my fabric and return back to construction. Yay! Now that the embroidery is all done, I've also joined together my front and back panels to my neck panel. So I've just done that with a joining blanket stitch. And I had to think about how was I going to deal with joining these center panels to the side panels. Because in a traditional people, these are going to be the salvage edges of the woven material. And so I've actually got to hem these instead of that. And so I'm just doing a basic um, double fold hem on both sides. You can see where I've done that here on this section where I've done a double fold and a double fold. And then just using that blanket stitch to join those together. But on this section with the lace, if I were to do a double fold in this direction, well, you'd see it behind the lace. And that's not what I want to do. So for this section, I'm actually going to do it more as a flat filled seam so that when I take my side panel, this side is still going to double fold over, but I'm going to join it together such that these fold over each other this way and then are sewn. It's kind of awkward to do just holding it in place, but and that way the raw edges are still encased but just that this section gets folded in the opposite direction. If I pin that in real quick. And then flip that over. Then we just get the nice folded edge right up next to the lace without anything going behind the lace. So that's how I'm handling those sections. I've been just basting these in with my polyester embroidery thread. I've still got to baste this side. It's only pinned in, but I will baste those in and then join the panels together. And then it goes really quick. So next time I talk to you, we'll probably be in the post reveal in thoughts. All right. See you later.
really like this. I love how comfortable it is. I love that I can sit here and just kind of get lost in the embroidery, like this drawn thread section. I like that it is not too feminine of a silhouette. I like that I can wear it belted or unmelted. I can wear it tucked in or out and it's pretty flexible in that. I'm looking forward to seeing how I like the fabric weight during the summer. I mean, if my djembe, which is made out of quilting cotton just as well as this is, is anything to go by, it's gonna be comfortable. I'm not gonna wear it on like the hottest days, but it's gonna be good. And I do look forward to playing around with the design and just this particular style of construction in the future. Um, I just found out there's a historical event happening here in Seattle uh, at the beginning of October. And rather than going the European route, I might make something historically Mexican. I think the one thing fit-wise that I might change is I might actually lower the neckline here because what I've got, I've got a good inch to play, so lowering that down another half inch might feel a bit more comfortable for me. Um, but as it is, it's good. The fit of this, like my grandmother never wore anything like this, but the fit of it and my body type, like I'm just getting flashbacks of, oh, hey, I look like my grandma. <laughs> and uh, yeah, going for the grandma slash auntie uh, aesthetic is, is, it's really what I'm about. I can wear this around the house. I can wear this to the store. I can go to work wearing this and feel comfortable and look okay. <laughs> like it's, it's not fancy and I'm not a fancy person. As I've mentioned previously, I do want to learn backstrap weaving. Um, that's a skill that seems like I would have a lot of fun with because being able to create the designs in the weaving, not just in the dye, I think would be really cool. So I might learn that in miniature form. So when I get around to making a mini me dress form, I will probably make a smaller version and experiment with some of those textiles that are possible with the backstrap weaving. So thank you for joining me on this journey. I look forward to seeing you on future ones. The next project, uh, if you haven't watched my year end wrap up, my next project is going to be some crazy quilting patchwork or a book cover. So we're gonna do quilt quilt. So we're gonna do crazy quilting and book binding. Yay! <laughs> um, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to doing it. In fact, I'm going to be starting that as soon as I'm done editing this video. I have to edit this video first. I will, I will. There's a huge part of me that wants to just sit down at my table and start doing the crazy patchwork. But no, I am going to finish editing this video. So I'm going to go sit in my computer and get this editing done. See you soon. Where's that baby? Where's that baby girl? Yeah, is that my baby girl? Is that my baby girl? Yes, yeah, she is. She's a very pretty girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Aww. <laughs> yeah, it's my pretty girl. Mm hmm. This is my baby. This is my baby. <laughs>